guys, and welcome to another part of, or episode, or whatever you want to call it, of the Reject Demon Togo Chapter Zero Prelude. Uh, you may notice that my voice is a little off, and that's because I'm actually pretty sick right now, and it really sucks. I woke up with a really bad sore throat the other day, and it, it hasn't really changed much, even though I've been pumping myself with medication or cold medicine, I guess. So, I just hope it, like, goes away by the weekend, because I'm supposed to be going to Edmonton for the weekend. So, yeah! <laughs> let's, uh, let's hope I feel better. Alright, so here we go! We came back from the park after defeating stuff, and we have the really cool new bass guitar. Alright. It's at the very least weird for Togo to now be so worried about a human. The cat is out of the bag, so the human say, so the human saying goes. She has already admitted she cares for her. Then again, she isn't much a demon herself anymore. Togo. Ah, Nadia, don't try to get up. You're fine. You're inside now. Wait, I had an awful dream, and I'm not sure what happened. I woke up in the middle of the park. You got captured by my sister. She tried to make me take your soul. So then, I wasn't dreaming. Then I didn't dream you confessing to me. <laughs> Toko's bruised and red face becomes even redder as she looks away. She looks at Epiphany, who is resting against the bookcase, and something tells her she's sleeping peacefully now. I, uh, I guess that really wasn't a dream. No. I don't remember how that went. What you said then. You remember just fine. It's how you said it happened. Toko, I want to hear you say those things again. Fine. Mm. Is it okay if I stay here a bit? You big dummy. Nadia leans up and looks, leans up and hooks her arm over Toko's shoulders, pulling Toko on top of her. Leaning up, she bruises, she brushes Toko's hair aside and gently kisses her on the forehead. Oh. Is that a yes? Yeah, I guess we'll have to find a spot to set up Epiphany. Wait, you know about Epiphany? Jeez, I wasn't just being a fainting idiot the whole time we were out there. S sorry. What about my soul? There's no way to separate it now. Being Epiphany, you and me, the only way to do it is if our soul is taken to limbo. I don't want anyone in hell chasing after me. You could be happy having a normal life, no I you could be happy having a normal life, now I have to worry about you as well. You're going to get weaker and weaker while everyone tries to claim my soul from you, and then what will happen? And if someone stronger than Devin beats you, I don't get to have a single say in it. I'm stuck watching my own fate play out in front of me. Nadia, I'm sorry, this could have been avoided if I left you alone. I didn't... Toko. The bass hums softly, and the, name, and the same confident air of Epiphany's voice rings out with a distant reverb. You've been listening to us? It's kind of hard not to. You think so loud. There is no way to separate Nadia's soul without killing Nadia. No, without killing all of us. What are you saying? I think she's saying that because of what happened, my soul has become inseparable from yours. We're sharing the same soul now. Toko, if you don't want to take her soul to Limbo, and you don't want anyone else to take her soul to Limbo, the only choice is to fight back. You make it sound like that would be easy. It's easier on my tuners. I'd choose that over hearing you two bitching and moping about how sucky everything is. I still feel like a pawn. I still feel like I'm a pawn being toyed with by hell. You two don't like the idea of Nadia's soul being taken. However, her soul is inside you now, Togo. To make this 100% clear, if any of us end up dying, then we all die. I struggled all these years just to possess a body of my own, and now that I have one, I won't spend forever floating in limbo waiting to be judged. So there's only one solution: kick everybody's asses until they do what you want. There, a happy resolution. Now you two go have sex and make up. But, hey! I'm going to take a nap, whatever you two decide. It still won't be very easy. I guess I never really had a very complicated life till now. For some reason, it feels better than waiting around for someone to show up and kidnap me. Good. I'm going back to sleep. Feel free to play me anytime, Toko. Don't leave me in a closet getting covered in dust somewhere. I've already spent enough time being ignored. I'm utterly exhausted as well. Nadia clings to Toko's back tighter and pulls the demon on top of her. Toko is still very unused to this human affection. Nadia turns off the light and pulls Toko under the covers. The two lie there for minutes on end before their whispers break the silence. 
Why a bass guitar? I have no idea how to play one. You should learn. I want you to serenade me sometime. Nadia, sorry for being such a jerk, but I'm going to make it up to you. Shh. Just sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. Good night, Toko. Good night, Nadia. So, you're a succubus, huh? G good night, Nadia! <laughs> Aww, look at their cute little sleepy figures. Toko sits on the edge of Nadia's bed, still a bit wound up after the previous night. She was in the process of using Nadia's television to distract herself from Devon when Nadia interrupted. Awake already? I'm surprised you got up first. You didn't think I was going to just lie there all day, did you? Press against the warmth of my balsam? But of course. Ah, you found the remote. Anything good on? It... Honestly, it's a lot of stuff I don't understand. I'm not really sure I'm fond of... Hi hi! Thank you! Blech. Before Toko can press her newly beloved change bu change channel button, Nadia swipes the remote from her and flops onto the bed. Hey, I was using that! Oh, that's Nemi Tenchi Tenchi! I nearly forgot that I have tickets! I have tickets too. What does the arcade have to- Not like that. Tickets to see her perform. You got tickets to see her? Yeah, she's really popular. My friend Steph knows people working backstage. It's super easy to score tickets. Excuse me. She's weird. Are you jealous? That's- No, she's just weird! What? Nuh-uh, now come on, breakfast time. Ugh, nothing spicy. <laughs> Something's not right here. Pardon? Nothing, I'm really, really hungry. That sounded exactly like what you said. I'd like to see her, maybe. Aha! Knew it! I think after last night we really need to cut loose and dance. Steph already got tickets, but we can see about sneaking in during setup and getting set up and getting more. <laughs> oh, do you think your friend Ginsa would like to come along? She's not my friend. Nadia sighs. Oh well, after breakfast I'll call Steph when we can go down to the concert. They'll let me in. You can borrow Steph's pass for now. I have both of them. Let me check the mail. I'll be right back. Tenshi. Will she be that bold? There's something about the exuberant girl's dance that makes Toko uncomfortable. Everything about Nemi makes her far too eye-catching, even for... Hey Toko, we need to head out. Please get dressed. Wait, huh? What's going on? You were the one who got this letter. It was from your school, so why do I have to go? It's from the Dean of Students. I don't understand it. It insists that you come. And on a Sunday, too. Toko looks confused, but if the letter's aware of her, then something's wrong. First the concert business, and now this. Nadia hits the down button on the wall. It's an elevator in the newly, bu newly built wing of the university, and at this point, no students have been allowed inside. The halls all seem eerily quiet. It's weird. I've never been to this part of the school. It's strange for the dean's office to be in the basement. Yeah, that's that's definitely weird. You normally don't expect someone's office to be on one of the bottom floors, where the boiler room and shit is supposed to be. Okay. The elevator pings and the door opens seconds later. The two of them step aboard, although Toko looks around nervously. Something feels off about this. The elevator jolts and begins to go down. And down. And it seems to go on forever. They're taking their way back to hell, and Pen Pel Pelatrix, or whatever, is going to talk to them. That's, that's what's going to happen, I'm betting. I'm willing to bet that. Let me see that letter. It's weird. It's not really a conventional school document. Then why are you following it? Nadia reaches into her bag and pulls out a black envelope with white text along with a matching folded, folded letter and happily sets it in Toko's hands. You didn't even think that a black letter seemed the slightest bit suspicious? The floor counter ticks down to minus 20, minus 21, and begins rapidly skipping floors. Minus 55, minus 143. When it reaches minus 250, it starts to count up. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Suddenly Toko's eyes widen at the paper in her hands, shriveling up and then dissolving to black dust. Her, ha her hackles rise as the air feels very different and uncomfortably familiar. I knew it! I knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew it! I knew it! This is bad! This is really bad! We've crossed over into hell! Really? There's an elevator to hell in my school. No wonder everyone was scared of the dean's office. Hey, this is no time to joke! This is real bad! No wonder it asked me to come along. 
Nadia seems unfazed by the whole thing, with a look that could only be considered a vague interest in seeing hell for the first time. Don't worry, Toko. I'm sure that if they were trying to hurt you, they would have they would have by now. Besides, you have Epiphany to protect you. And me. Nadia latches her arm around Toko's and leans in. It is comforting in an embarrassing sort of way as Nadia leans up against Toko and pulls her close. Toko reaches to her chest and firmly holds onto Epiphany's strap. Y yeah. The numbers on the floor counter begin to rapidly slow. 1,968. 1,976. When it reaches 2,112, the elevator pings again and opens up. The walls are a painfully familiar black marble. The sky glaring through the windows is an unpleasant welcoming red. As home as Toko feels at the moment, it makes her as unsettled as she could possibly be. Well, yeah, that's understandable, considering everyone in this whole fucking place is trying to take Nadia's soul, which is inside Toko, and they're all gonna die if that happens. So, yeah, I'd be pretty unsettled too. In the middle of the floor is a carpet that leads the way through a painful long office to a desk at the far end. She can hear the scribbling of signatures and the stamping of papers at the other side of the room. It's Pelotrix. Yup. Nadia looks through the window, staring at the strange red cityscape before her. It looks like a human city, yet warped into impossible architectures. Even at Toko, everything about it always seemed off. I knew it. It was Pelotrix. Now, now, Toko, don't keep me waiting. That voice. It's annoyingly familiar. Toko runs through the voice. Toko. Toko. You, you, you're suddenly a dean now. Suddenly, I've always been the dean of students. I can't very well step in the overworld anymore, so I had an elevator put in my office. Nadia bounces along after Toko, trying to catch up after she went off. Toko, don't run away like that. Jeez. You, it was all you, wasn't it? That's right. Toko, don't ignore me. Toko takes a step back and looks at Nadia as she finally catches up. She becomes increasingly upset, her hand clinging to Epiphany into the back of Nadia's sweater. And it was you. You were the one who told Ginso to follow us. Pelotrix closes a black folder and places her hands upon her desk, linking her fingers together. She seems to croon, amused at the two. Yes, that's right. And Devin, you opened the contract on Nadia's soul and told Devin to go after it. Yep, it was me. Pelotrix doesn't move. She only stays there, watching and smiling. Toko's face, however, turns red and angry. Nadia thinks to Toko's side reassuringly. Toko, calm down. And you orchestrated that entire mess to make me come back here, didn't you? Why? Why did you do it? Pelotrix watches Nadia, then turns back to Toko. To waking up a funny, of course. Why do you think you've been given so many chances? Why do you think Lindo has kept your contract renewed year after year despite not carrying any souls? Pelotrix lifts her hands and gestures to Epiphany. You don't think that we as demons couldn't tell what was going on with you, do you, Toko? It is incredibly unusual for such a situation to occur, for you to possess a complete human soul while the host continues living. This is an exceptionally exciting moment. But you were always so stubborn, so headstrong, no one could get through you. All you needed was a little push to send you in the right direction. Toko bends over and slams her palms on the top of the desk. So you used me for your own stupid game. You picked me out of hell and you... Introduced you to Nadia and Epiphany. Exactly. Toko recoils. She can feel her blood cooking in her bones. I don't like being used. I don't like being bossed around and toyed with. I want you to leave me and Nadia alone. Toko. Nadia clings to Toko tighter, and the look on her face is like she's in bliss. Peltrix curls her arms underneath her chest and muses over something. You and Nadia, huh? You've changed, Toko. A lot from a mere three days in the overworld. You have so much potential as a demon, more than you will ever know. It'd be a shame if you waste it living in the overworld being hunted by demons and angels. What are you talking about? As a demon without an instrument, you have never participated in the inter circle rock competition, have you? What are you getting at, Pelotrix? I mean that now you have Epiphany. Pelotrix stands up and throws her hands into the air. You can participate in this year's inter circle rock competition, Hell on Earth Tour. Oh wow, this sounds like an amazing name. I wonder what kind of music demons like to listen to. I'm not interested. But Toko, it might be fun. Exactly, it is fun. And for the last 200 years, Outer Circle has never won a trophy in the Inner Circle rock competition. Wait, Outer Circle? Outer Circle, this is separate. This is separate into nine tiers, with three circles of three tiers. Outer Circle is Limbo, Lust, and Gluttony. Middle Circle is Wrath, Envy, and Greed. Inner Circle is Sloth, Sorrow, and Pride. 
It should be no surprise to even a human that the inner city of this is where the strongest humans, strongest demons in hell reside. Inner Circle is the strongest of the strong, who have held the Inner Circle Rock Competition title for the last 200 years, and this one band has held that title all 200 years running. Erin Yes. Wait, who's Erin Yes? Erin Yes is a band from Inner Circle. I've never seen them personally. They only hold it concerts in Inner Circle. No one from Middle Circle or Outer Circle ever goes there. Huh. That poster looks pretty interesting. And you're going to beat them. You're crazy! Even if you cooked up this stupid scheme to awaken up Penny, there's no way I'll beat them. I don't know how to- I don't know how or care to know how. But that's not true, Toko. You want to learn how to play up Penny properly, don't you? Toko furrows her brow a bit, trying hard to find a reason to deny it. Still, there's no way I'll be able to. I don't have a band and I don't have a manager. But that's not true. There's your manager. Postrix sneezes as she gestures to Nadia and then adjusts her glasses with a devious grin. She lifts her arms up and elegantly claps her hands. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So this whole time, Pelotrix just wanted to create a rock band in the outer circle to beat the one in the inner circle? This does- this is- Everything about this is making me think of Disgaea 3 and how messed up and the comedy and the, and the plot of everything uh, of this Disgaea series. That's what it's making me think of right now. It's... it's, it's <laughs> it just throws you for a loop because it's like, wait, what? This isn't what I expected. This is actually completely the opposite of what I expected. The hell? But alright! Okay, cool. Guess we're gonna make a rock band. It's for some reason. And apparently that's why we gather souls as demons, is to create powerful rock bands. Okay! And as for your band... Y you two! What the hell are you two doing here? I think so made me look like an idiot, and you tried to force me to take Nadia's soul. Give me one good reason for even thinking of helping you now. Hey, you're the bully from the park. We've not been formally introduced, have we? Little Miss here is Toko's older sister. I'm sure you're quite aware of that. But Sissy has something rather precious tucked away in her obstinate little heart. Someone with a brain lost in Wonderland that her would have never noticed after Benny on her own. Besides, as this post trip said, you've got to be reunited with your little girly friend, right? I was forbidden from telling you everything, or you would not have done this willingly. So this whole time everyone knew about this but me? That really pisses me off. Devin whips out a small handkerchief from her safe before dabbing away her non-existent tears, and then drops it into David's hands so carefully holds it. You know, I didn't relish having to beat up my precious little sister, but we had no other options. Liar. I won't do this. I won't do it. This is another excuse for you to for you two to pull a prank or, or to manipulate me. You're wrong, Togo. This was to realize your potential. Naturally, an instrument finds its own within failing souls, but as a farrier, you are utterly hopeless. For whatever the reason, you possess a rather strong bond that has created Epiphany. So without King So and Devon's help, we would have never been able to draw out your instrument. Desperate situations, desperate measures. As Outer Circle, we need to send our strongest bands to the Inner Circle Rock Competition, and you four are our best shot at winning the title. Epiphany is weak from her fight with Devon and years of neglect. In the human world, she'll never be able to sustain herself, and neither will you. For your own personal gain, not for any sympathy from me or Nadia. Don't forget you kicked me out. You personally shredded my folder. Why should I do anything for you? Or for Ginso, or for fucking Devin, or for any horrid little speck of hell now? So, you found Epiphany, didn't you? You're with Nadia now, aren't you? I acted completely in your interests. Besides, if you succeed in winning the title for Outer Circle, Limbo will reinstate you as a demon carrier and... Peltrick pulls out a large and expansive contract and lays it out upon the desk before Togo. Nadia attempts to read it, but it's in some strange demonic language. Nadia's contract will be closed forever and sealed. Her soul will not be taken to Limbo, and Nadia will be allowed to serve her penance for the sins she's committed while she's still alive. Wait, this means we won't have to be separated? Impossible. I would never allow this. The demon code is very clear by Farrier's duties. Peltrick rocks side to side with a grin on her face. You forget, Toko, that I run Limbo and I am the caretaker of Farriers. Your situation with Nadia and Epiphany is extraordinary and so requires extraordinary bending of the rules. 
You're not doing this for my sake or Nadia's. You're just doing this to Outer Circle will win. You're just doing this so Outer Circle will win. So, isn't that what every demon strives for? To win? Toko, I think we should do this. I think... I think it might actually be fun. You've never been to hell, Nadia. It's not a place for humans. So, you're not very demon-like yourself anymore. Nadia tugs on Toko's arm insistently and forces her hand into Toko's palm. I think I've had enough of being that around. If this is going to happen, we should have to happen now. We should have it happen on our terms. Remember what we talked about? The only alternative would be for us to separate again. Toko looks at Nadia hesitantly and squeezes back, but then in a self-reaffirming way she grabs on the Epiphany's strap, thinking about their conversation last night. Epiphany seems to hum back at her. Fine, I'm going to go, but not for any of you. Not for your stupid titles. I'll go for Nadia. For Epiphany. And I get to choose the band's name. Well, okay. That didn't turn out so bad. But, uh, I think I'll end it here, guys. This was rather... interesting, to say the least. So, uh, yeah! See you guys in the next one. Hey guys, and thanks for watching this episode of The Reject Demon Toko Chapter Zero Prelude. Um, if you're interested in watching more of this, I suggest you subscribe so that you'll be able to get more updates on the episodes that I'll be releasing, so just click on my icon for that. Uh, if you're more interested in something else, uh, I've done Invisible Apartment, Journal, and Long Live the Queen. So if you're interested in checking those out, then just click the icons there. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.